What is up guys, Joe Perrites here, and today I'm bringing you another episode of The Writer's Thoughts. These air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash joeperrites at 8.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can catch replays on my YouTube, youtube.com slash joeperrites. Feel free to like and comment if you enjoy the video, and also if you have any new topics that you want me to see covered. These are topics in the gaming, geeky, and also the streaming worlds that I am very familiar with. So definitely drop by, subscribe, follow, all that kind of good stuff if you want to catch more. Now I'm going to jump into it and start with uh, the looter shooter genre. Now I'm a big fan, I'm a longtime Destiny player, and I've played pretty much all of the various iterations of the looter shooters. Now Anthem announced that they're going to do a complete relaunch. This is exciting for me, but also uh, cautiously optimistic is what I'd say with regards to the game because I was a day one Anthem player. I did go through the main story and play it quite a bit. However, the end game was just so underwhelming. I think everyone felt the progression system. Everything was just not up to par. We've seen that a lot with all of the looter shooters, whether it's Destiny, whether it's The Division, even Borderlands 3 has had some issues with it. Whereas out the gate, the games don't launch with all the content that they might need and all the settings in place that are going to make it thrive over the long haul. Now, Anthem was taking part in a seasonal roadmap, but they've adjusted and they're going to do away with that seasonal content and just try to do a full relaunch, which I think is the right move. We've seen games like No Man's Sky and Final Fantasy Online, uh, do completely reshape their image into what I think they wanted to be when they first dropped and just couldn't be for whatever reason, whether they were rushed to launch, whether they couldn't fully implement all the systems without a base there, it would take too long, whatever the case may be. We're seeing Anthem try to take that same path and I think that's the right move for them. Time will tell whether it pays off in the long run. And I don't think anyone's going to pay for any additional content if you already have the game and this is free. Possibly this could help reinvigorate it. I loved the combat. I love the flying. A lot of people I know say the same thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if they find a way to implement a really great roadmap of content that this game does have a rebirth of sorts. But who knows? They have to do right and they have to bring in all the content that was missing when it launched. Now, we also had Borderlands 3 announce their upcoming roadmap. And this included things like uh, Valentine's Day event, uh, new DLC, which is being announced at PAX East in a couple weeks, and additional things that are going to be coming here in the near future, such as quality of life changes, skippable cutscenes, for example, and improvements to their echo cast feature which i'm a big fan of if you've heard me talk before about the echo cast you know that i think implementing ways for viewers to get involved with the streaming side is huge for games and i think more games need to do more of that so if they can improve that make better use of that program then i think that game would benefit greatly in the long haul so there's also Division 2, kind of surprise announced, a new DLC, which is launching in March, so not only a few weeks away. This is going to be a huge new area of New York that they're going back to, and it's something that I'm very, very much looking forward to, because I really didn't jump into the Division 2. The Division 2 really took off at launch, it did really well for the first couple of weeks, and then right around the time its first raid uh, launched, it kind of steadily went downhill. And I think it just didn't have the sustainability that other games we've seen have, and they weren't able to update it in ways that, that made it so the community felt involved. There was a lot of quality of life things, just like with Borderlands 3, that needed to be fixed earlier for its hardcore player base to really stick around and stay for a long period of time there are still pl people playing it obviously but it could have done a lot better and capitalized on that momentum now there has been a little bit of pushback because uh ubisoft the publisher for division two has thrown a bunch of money now at big time streamers who don't normally play their game to uh really play and advertise this warlords of new york DLC. The problem 
a lot of people in the community are finding is that they're not rewarding the loyalty and the people that have stayed at the top of the Twitch directory while the game has been down. And that's something that I think Borderlands really did well when they brought forth their stream team because it was a lot of well-known faces in the Borderlands community instead of just throwing all of their budgeting, all their value, all their money at the top streamers who don't play the game, might play the game while it's sponsored for a few hours, and then never touch it again. So I think there's a good give and take. My personal take idea on it is that companies, when a game first launches, a new IP, they should get those big streamers in to kind of see how their fans like the game, see if it crosses over, all that good stuff. When you have DLC, when you have future updates, when you have even a relaunch, you can bring some of those big streamers in, but you also need to throw some perks at the top folks in your directory who have been playing because over the long haul, they're going to bring a lot of viewers, a lot of eyeballs to that game consistently and not just a one-time flash in the bucket. So we'll see what they decide to do, but that's something that I think a lot of people are kind of back and forth about and I see both sides uh, obviously throwing money at the biggest streamers helps it helped the game like Apex launch um, but overall there I think there's better ways to do it than Ubisoft is doing it right now but that's just my personal opinion there was another trailer launch of Outriders this is a game that was not on my radar until recently it's a one to three player co-op RPG it looks similar to a cross between like a Destiny type game, but also prototype with some of the abilities. There's just a lot going on, and it looked really awesome. Definitely check it out. It's actually Square Enix is publishing that game. So I have a lot of faith that it'll be pretty solid overall, and I'm looking forward to seeing what <laughs> what future updates come from that game because there's a... Today, actually, um, there's actually going to be a live game play trailer shown so we're going to see exactly what we're getting ourselves into with that one so very excited about that then we had the news which is somewhat interesting but it might not mean anything that drake is actually signed with caffeine if you don't know caffeine is a streaming rival with twitch and mixer and youtube gaming all that kind of good stuff they focused a lot on hip-hop artists you've seen offset go sign with them as well and it looks like drake is going to be doing a rap battle program for them so he's going to be i don't know how much he's actually going to be streaming or if his whole focus is going to be that rap battle thing it's just interesting the direction that caffeine has decided to go they had previously signed someone like uh, pewdiepie um just other big name people and it just hasn't always worked out it hasn't translated that site is not really doing that well because just like with mixer and youtube at times the problem is not the big names. The problem is the functionality of the site and the, the benefits and the perks. They don't match up to Twitch yet. And the longer that they go without matching up to Twitch, the harder it is going to be for them to take away parts of that fan base or find its own fan base if people don't enjoy going to the site. Last thing I'm going to touch on right now is Pokemon Home. Just dropped. It's live on your Switch, mobile, all that kind of good stuff. This is allows you to translate, transfer your Pokemon from one game to the next, including Pokemon Go, Sword and Shield, all that kind of good stuff. So it's something that I, I think a lot of people were looking forward to. And I'm pretty sure Niantic was looking at this when they decided to not have the Pokemon Sword and Shield Pokedex be huge. They knew this was going to eventually happen. And this crossover, as the game has not been out that long, so I'm not surprised that we are seeing this now. But I think this is a big step in the right direction towards pulling all Pokemon together, making it feel like more of a collective like crossover between all the different platforms and devices. Yeah, and uh, I think it's like $16 for the whole year if you want the e premium service, which is not bad at all. Uh, so I've seen some complaints about that, but overall, I think that's a fair price to charge for a system like that. So anyway, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you guys, as always, for stopping by, watching the videos. If, like I said, you want to see me cover any topics at all, 
leave a comment on my YouTube, follow me on Twitter, drop by my Twitch stream, all Joppa rights, and I will catch you guys later. Thanks as always for stopping by the channel. Make sure to like and subscribe for future content, and I will catch you guys later.